Okay, this is the um, video narration. I'm reading the text for uh, my Rescue Swimmer School video. Still version one. Um, uh, this is second uh, attempt at this text. So, um, okay, here we go. Hey, this is Hardball here. The following video is an attempt to set the record straight as to what actually occurred at the U.S. Navy's Rescue Swimmer School in Pensacola, Florida back in the fall and winter of 1987 and 88 for three reasons. First, this project is an offshoot of another video I created, a military service overview for the veterans law firm Barry Law out of Nebraska, who I hired a few months back to address the numerous VA healthcare screw-ups, incompetencies, and abuses I've dealt with over the past many years. Secondly, it's a, uh, is that over the years, I've run across many younger sailors who heard by word of mouth the stories about these events at Rescue Swimmer School, but never dug into the full story, and who also may have heard varying levels of distortion as to the facts of these events. And in my opinion, it's been a purposeful distortion. And thirdly, is after 33 years of insults and threats that I've received from the very same people responsible for those distortion of facts, I've decided it's time to give them something to really bitch about. I've spent a little bit of time in the beginning of the video so as to give the viewer a sense of the, quote, spirit of the times back then in 1988 which was more than a decade before the horrendous events of September 11th, 2001. I believe this Spirit of the Times review will help younger viewers understand some of the societal influences that may have helped to drive the tragic events that I'll cover in this video. Please forgive the rough editing and grammar as this video and script as usual, were slammed together in great haste and is merely a concept piece for a much bigger project. One that I hope will become a full length documentary for a broader audience and will be registered with the Library of Congress. Thank you for taking the time to watch this and as always, I'd love to hear commentary and or constructive corrections to my timeline. Okay, beginning of the RSS video. For those of you who can remember the post-Vietnam War era in America, anti-military sentiment from a sizable portion of the American population was rampant and deep. These Americans said anyone who contemplated or actually did join the military after 1975 was considered to be either a warmonger, a wannabe baby killer, a pro-President Nixon establishment type, and or a loser in American society who couldn't find employment other than that of the military. Even children of service members were targeted for public ridicule, as I've lived through this same harassment growing up in the beach area of Southern California in the 60s and 70s, and as the fifth son of a career Navy fighter pilot who served in World War II, Korea, and the first part of Vietnam. Many will remember back then that anybody with a military-style haircut was seen by the, quote, cool people, i.e. the anti-military types, as a de facto Nazi, therefore an open target for harassment. The following quote is from an article entitled, The Homecoming of the Vietnam Veterans. Quote, Clearly, it was unpopular for someone to be a Vietnam veteran or even a member of the military. In the 1970s, Vietnam veterans were discriminated against for jobs, publishing books of their war experiences, and were, and were referred to as the social delinquents in our society. Even the VFW refused to allow us membership. It seems like every movie about Vietnam, to that point, portrayed the veteran as a killing machine with mental problems, bad marriages, hooked on drugs, and alcohol, alcoholics. In sp okay, that's the end of that quote. In spite of all that anti-military discrimination, 
I joined the Navy just about a year after the 1986 blockbuster movie Top Gun that hit big, the big screens. A tremendous box office smash as it showed U.S. Navy fighter pilots in a rightfully glamorous and heroic light, leading to record-breaking enlistment into the U.S. Navy. But such a fresh perspective on military service took a long time to sink into the actual military as well. Service members were harangued by their high school contemporaries and even family members when the service member was at home on leave. You must be a Nazi to have joined the military. Meanwhile, another type of division was building within the ranks of those serving on active duty in those interim conflict years between 1975 and 1991. The majority of those on active duty back in the mid 80s never got a chance to quote prove themselves in the extremis of serving in a combat zone, much less under fire. And this caused some, I stress, a very few to try and prove their mettle by creating a world of conflict within the military in my opinion, so as to be able to thump their chest as to who's the most badass, even in a peacetime era. And why? Well, partly because of the stories of incredible heroism and dedication to duty during Vietnam that echoed throughout the training halls and across every military base in America. Virtuous stories, Stories that were the exact polar opposites of everything the young service members saw and heard from, heard, heard of from their fellow countrymen, who they swore to defend. And some of these people realized that their chances of actual combat time was never going to happen in the few years they had left in the service. But simultaneously, in that post-Vietnam military and just prior to Operation Desert Storm in 91, many older members within the ranks of the Navy had extremely negative views of military service and couldn't wait to get out and become a civilian again. This was driven a lot by the cacophony of anti-military voices throughout American culture. Just think of the countless anti-military rock songs from that era. But there was hope as well. The post-Top Gun movie service members I knew and serve with seemed to have a different outlook on service, where being in uniform defending this nation could indeed be seen as, quote, cool again. And these are the very same younger service members who brought about that incredible victory of public opinion during and after Operation Desert Storm in 1991. But remember, all this newfound support for the military paled in comparison to how the American people rallied behind our troops after 9-11, a phenomenon that is all too sadly once again fading from the popular culture. 20 years after those attacks.